Now, good morning, everyone. I want to believe that you are doing well. Welcome to this lesson. This is our fourth lesson for in SANS. Now, in, the, in our lessons or in our previous lessons, we have been looking at the separation of mixtures. And today we are in the, in the third method, and that is hand picking. So today we are going to discuss about hand picking as a method of separating mixtures. Now, hand picking is the process of separating solid particles that are big and also have different colors. When we have uh, two solids or even more solids that have different shapes, I mean, I mean, they are different sizes and also colors, then the best method that you can use to separate such kind of solids is just by picking up, uh, picking with our hands. So hand picking is just using your hands to pick. Now look at this diagram that we have down here. These are mixture of uh, beans. We have peas and also some maize. Now you can see this, these are solids with different sizes. Some looks to be smaller, others looks to be uh, more large. Then if you look at the colors, we have some are white in color, some are black, some are brownish. So because they have different colors and also different sizes, then the most effective method that you can use to separate such kind of mixtures is by uh, hand picking or just picking using hands. Now, some of the examples that you can, some of the example of mixer that you can use hand to pick is a mixture of maize and beans, a mixture of rice and pebbles. Now, when we have those mixtures, then we are simply using our hand to pick them. And I, I believe that this is an, an, an exercise that we have been doing, uh, doing at home especially when you have a mixture of beans and maize, you want to separate them, or you realize that you are, your maize is having a mixture of maybe the yellow maize and the white maize, and you want to separate the yellow maize from the white maize, what do you do? You simply, tear, you simply use your hand and you pick the maize, I mean the yellow maize from the white maize, and by the end of that exercise, you will be left with the, the yellow maize aside and also the white maize aside. By doing so, that method that you are using is called hand picking. So hand picking is only use of hands to select which type or which kind of uh, solid that you want to put aside, and then you will be left with the other one. So it's called hand picking. is a method of separating mixtures. It's just as simple as that, nothing else. So we have said that some of the examples, maize and beans, rice and pebbles, you can use or even rice and 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 uh, beans. You can use the hand picking method to separate. I want us to move very fast to the fourth uh, fourth uh, method. is called winnowing. Winnowing. Now, what is winnowing? Now, winnowing is the process of separating two solids. Okay, two solids. Now, in these two solids, we have two different types of solids. One is light. The other one is heavy. Okay, so when you are doing winnowing, here we have light solid and a heavy solid. So what do we do? Now the light solids and heavy solids, uh, you put them, the mixture on a tray. Okay, you can put them on a tray or any other container that you may use and then you toss them up or you fan them. Okay, so winnowing is the process of separating two solids light solid and heavy solids by putting the mixtures on a tray, then toss them up or fanning them. Now, when you are doing this, you will realize that the light materials will be blown away by winds as the heavy ones return to the tray. Example, when you have a mixture of rice and husks, you have a mixture of maize and chaff, you have a mixture of bean and sawdust, and you want to separate them. Look at how we are doing winnowing, this is how we are doing the winnowing. You can see the lady here is trying to separate. Okay, let me put it so that in a way that you can see it clearly. Mm -hmm. This person is trying to, that person that you see there is called winnowing. You can see the mama there is trying to separate the maize from husks. So by doing so, the light husks will be blown away by the wind and then the maize, which looks to be heavier, will be, uh, will be taken back to the container that is there. So that process, and uh, you must know that in winnowing, we are 
we are being aided or we are being held by the by the wind is the wind that will will fan away okay will blow away or will fan away the light materials and then we are left with our with our heavy materials in that case we have the maize and the chaff so that's all about the winnowing and you can see it there the fifth method of separating mixtures is called sieving now in sieving it is the process of separating two solids and this is one must be smaller, the other one must be larger. So when you are doing the sieving, we are separating smaller from larger. What will happen? The smaller particles will pass through the sieve and then the larger ones will remain in the, in the sieve. Look at this example, uh, look at this diagram here. Here is our sieve, you can see. It allows the smaller particles to pass through the sieve holes and then the larger particles will be left. I think you have been going to the uh, to the to the portion miller, especially when you are going to grind the maize. Before you get to that, there's something like a, a sieve outside there where they are going to put your maize and ensure that all those chaffs, small particles, stones are are passed through the sieve holes, and then you are left with your maize. That process is called the sieving. Even at home, when you have when you have prepared the tea, how do we how do you separate how do you separate the tea liquid from the from the solid tea leaves? We just use a sieve, where by the the nini the the tea itself, the liquid tea will pass to the holes, and then in the in the sieve there you will be left with your large particles. Those are the tea the, the solid tea leaves. So we are we call it sieving because we are using the sieve. You can see there. Other mixtures that can be separated by sieving, we have uh, maize flour and rice. You know, when you are doing the this, when you are using the sieve, you realize that the maize flour are of small sizes, therefore they will be passing through the holes, and then rice will be left. Millet and maize, millet will pass through the sieve, maize will be left. Fine sand and coarse sand, the fine sand will pass through the sieve. And then you'd be left with your coarse sand up there. So that's what we call sieving. Very fast. Let's go to the uh, another method. It's called evaporation. Evaporation. These are complicated methods that I want you to understand. And I'm going to take you here. What do we mean by evaporation? Now, it is the process of separating soluble solute in a solvent. Now, these are where we have a solid that dissolves. In water, let's just now. I just used. I want to use simple example that you understand. For example, let me say you have salt. You know very well that salt dissolves in water. Okay. Now, how do you separate salt from water? That's what we call evaporation. This is the process of separating a soluble solid in a solvent. Okay. So how are we going to do this? Now, this is achieved by boiling the solvent until. It evaporates. When it, it, it has evaporated, you are going to be left with the solute behind. That's something that you should understand. But in this method, it's really in, uh, evaporation, only a solute is recovered as the solvent vaporized to the atmosphere. When we have a, a, sol, a, a salt solution and you want to, uh, to regain back your salt, you are going to, to boil this salt solution water is going to evaporate and then in your container it is only the salt that is going to be left water is going to evaporate so it is important that to know that in this method it is only a solute is recovered because the solvent in this case maybe water will evaporate to the atmosphere so we have a salt solution can be used uh, we can use evaporation to separate salt from water we also have sugar solution but you should know that in sugar it, it, it always very difficult because at times sugar always melt. Okay, so the best mixture that you can use evaporation to separate is a, a mixture of salt solution. Uh, I've said that it's only one substance that is, is recovered, the solute as the solvent evaporates. Then I want us to come here and look at this. We have an experiment that we should do. We are going to, to separate water with sand and salt okay here you have make uh, you realize that maybe when you are 
having your salt, then accidentally, your salt mixed up with the sun, uh, with, with the sand. Now, how do you regain sand? I mean, how do you regain salt from sand? So we have sand and salt mixture. How do you separate the two? So material that we need for this activity, we need sand, we need salt, we need handkerchief, clean container, we need a, a water tin, we are going to have a spoon to stir, we have the rubber band and the candle. Now, after we have, have all those, all the steps, one, step number one, we are going to mix salt and sand in a container. So just take uh, uh, salt and sand and you mix them. So you have a mixture of salt and sand, and then pour the mixture of your salt and sand in, a wa in water, okay? So you bring in water, then you pour them together, you put them together. Now we have sand, salt, and water put together and then you stir them, okay? Then let the mixture stand for some time to ensure that all your salt are going to be solved in this water. Then after that, what do you do? Now, now you can see, so we have mixed sand, salt, and water. We have stirred them, salt as the salt in this water, and then we filter. You know the filtration method? When we are filtering, we are going to be left with sand is going to be left as a residue. Then in our other container, we are going to have the solution of salt and water as a filtrate. You, you mark those words, huh? So filter the mixture into another container. We want now the filtrate. So we have the filtrate and this filtrate is a mixture of water and salt, okay? Then you take that filtrate and then you heat it. You put it in a container and then you heat it using the candle, okay? So you just heat this solution and then what will happen? Now, this is a diagram to show. So in this evaporation dish, we have a mixture of salt and water you can see here and we are going to heat it. We are going to heat it until that water evaporates into the atmosphere. And then when you do that, what will you observe? You are going to realize that water will evaporate and then your salt is going to be left in the container. That method is called evaporation because it allows the solvent to evaporate into the atmosphere and then left with a solute in the container. By doing so, you realize that you have recovered your salt, though water has disappeared or has evaporated to the, into the atmosphere. Dear learners, I believe today we have learned almost four methods of separating mixtures, and I believe you have enjoyed this lesson. Please go through this video, look at them one by one. Could there be any step that you don't understand? You are free to ask. Otherwise, I want to wish you the best and continue learning.